Hello, everybody. Welcome to Most Wanted Topics. I'm your host, Kevin Dennison, along with me, Atomic Tommy, broadcasting to you from our studio here at Most Wanted Comics here in beautiful Bloomington, Minnesota. How's it going, Atomic Tommy? It's going good. It's going good. Big things going on. Two interviews today. Uh, we're going to start off with our interview with Brent Schoonover, who is here signing autographs at the shop and doing sketch covers. And then also we have our interview with the great Keith Champagne, co-founder of New Pain Productions, and going to be talking about the latest and greatest and hopefully confirming his arrival for March 16th here at the hopefully, shop. Hopefully, yeah. So, yeah, well, we got a lot of things coming up here. Uh, first thing i got to start with is a real bee in my bonnet. i got to tell you. I was shopping this morning outside the store. You know, Girl Scout cookie sales have begun. Uh, all excited. You know, look at me. I'm not a hard sell for cookies, okay? You don't have to go, do you want to buy Girl Scout cookies? You had me at setup, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you had me at setup. I was going to buy Girl Scout cookies regardless. But really what got to me is I got the box. It was five for 30. And I looked at the boxes. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they're smaller. My wife's like, oh, you're not smaller. You're just, you know, you're whatever. whatever. I said, they're smaller. We're, I know this stuff. I eat Girl Scout cookies, you know. <laughs> you're screwing me here on the cookies. What's going on with that? And then so I'm just looking, and she's like, they're not smaller. I'm like, honey, they're smaller. I mean, come on. We're not getting the, the roll is a little smaller. And sure enough, I go online. If I'm if I'm complaining, someone else is complaining. There's got to be another. And sure enough, about 11 days ago on Reddit, someone had actually put a picture. I was just showing to you now. This is behind me. It is smaller. So once again, ha. I was right. Um, it is smaller. I couldn't say that to her because then I'd be out of the house. But the point is, I was right. I know it in my heart. That's a victory for Kev Bo. And uh, <laughs> victory. the internal victories are what internal we... Internal victories. The internal victories make me just as happy, even when you can't brag about it to the wife. <laughs> the, w- <laughs> the wife. Uh, I mean, no, I'll, I'll joke aside, though. This is a travesty. It's a travesty. It's a national outrage. We're paying five, five for mean, 30 five for thirty dollars ladies and gentlemen. And I tell you what, we get a, we get shrinkflation. It almost makes me want to scream at the top of my lungs. I'm so up, upset. I'm upset, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is just... Yeah, I, just, a tear I, to I, my I don't eye. know what to say. I am just so just so you know, shrinkflation is alive and well. The economy, I, I, I feel it, but that that makes me mad because our comic books aren't smaller. They are not. I mean, not in quality, our comic book size in half. Quality may be such, quality, but, that, they're, but that's they're on smaller. the people they're, they're we're hiring. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, take a look at the the, the report that, that wouldn't be if they hired me. Well, I know. Well, you read the comics. I mean, <laughs> the, we just saw that article where Disney was telling their the directors and the editors, "Oh, don't read the comics. We're worried about the the messaging." Well, what the hell? If you're not going to read the comic books, you're making a comic book movie. There's something flawed there, right? I mean, I don't know. It's just a mess. But anyway, the whole Girl Scout cookie thing really set me off today, so I've got a whole tangent going. So I'm not even going to talk to you about what I think about the casting of the Fantastic Four that came out. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> big news this week. Big news this week. Big news this week. Big things happening. So I don't know what to make of it. It could be good. could be bad. I'm not sure yet. It depends. I mean, Fantastic Four, you think of Cosmos, Galaxy, Space Adventures, you know, hooking up with the Silver Surfer, fighting Galactus, all the cool stuff. Or are they just going to make it, we're saving Earth on planet Earth, we're going to try to be the Avengers, and we're going to make another shitty movie? Yeah, you know, that's that's definitely a great take. A great take. I mean, look, the Fantastic <laughs> Four, um, the casting, I have... I don't know. I don't. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I'm. I'm too. I. I. I just don't care about the casting. You know, it really doesn't matter who's playing them as long as that person does a good job, right? I don't care if Pedro Pascal is playing Reed Richards. I don't care that Joseph Quinn is playing. You know, the Human Torch. As long as they do a good job, as long as they keep fine. it in space. Yeah, and that too, you know. Can you I, go in space once in a while? <laughs> well, it looks like the movie's going to be set back in the 60s. They're going to, from tri- time travel shenanigans, so we'll see. Okay, it's all going to tie to the, 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 the time where, where now Loki is the head of in the, in the... I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> we don't know what direction they're going, ladies and gentlemen. But I tell you what, we're still upset about the Girl Scout cookies. I'm not going to let that... No, anyway, I'm just kidding. Brent's going over on his way. I tell you what, this is going to be... Uh, I'm so excited that Brent came in. He's been in our store twice now. Sign autographs. The, the fans love him. Most Wanted Comics loves him. Uh, we we uh, 
We think he's a great artist, and uh, we're looking forward to talking to him. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Mr. Brent Schoonover, everybody. All right, with us now is the awesome, the epic, good friend of Most Wanted Comics, Brent Schoonover, everybody. A little clap action. Oh, you're a wonderful audience. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, we have to do that for everybody that comes in. Brent, yeah. this is the second time now since we've opened our store. One year you've been to our store. Uh, you, you and Burnham are the coveted two that have been oh, here twice. Yeah. Uh, Keith and Tom will soon to be joining you, but uh, in the in the two time circle. But it's an honor for you to be here. It is. It is. I'm hoping, like uh, in on SNL, when you join the Five Timers Club, you get the with Steve the, Martin the, 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 smoke, yeah. the smoking jacket. The smoking jacket. <laughs> and as well, it's an honor for us too to have you. Uh, I, I gotta say. Uh, you've done some incredible work. I've gotten a chance to know you uh, from the ground up because you're a local artist here in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So I've gotten to see you at past fall cons and past events. Let's not forget at my daughter's dance class, D- too. Daughter's <laughs> dance class. Our, our, our warehouse shared the same uh, building as uh, Brent's daughter's dance class. So when he was waiting for his daughter, he'd come in and look at comic books. So yeah. we were sorting comic books. So it was always a fun time. You guys got killed, helped me kill a lot of a downtime there when you guys, I found out you guys were in that same building. I was like, oh, this is awesome. That was fun. Mm. Uh, I got to say, um, it's just been, it's been a, pl- a true pleasure to get to know you over the years and some of your work. Um, Thank you. My first exposure to you was Batman 66. Mm-hmm. And I know you've probably done some work before that because I'm not a huge history buff. Yeah. But let's start off for the people that don't know you, kind of how you got into the game and, and kind of broke you into the industry. Um, you know, I, I think I always liked to draw, even when I was really young. And then I think around when uh, the Batman, Tim Burton Batman came out, like I just became obsessed with uh, Batman and I just was drawing him all the time. And that summer we took a trip to um, uh, wall drug. Well, we went, we were heading to, to go see Mount Rushmore and we stopped at wall drug, South Dakota, and they had a spinner rack of comics and we had a long ways to go. And so my dad just bought me and my brother, a bunch of comic books there. Those are my first comic books I ever had. And I just felt became obsessed. There was a, a West Coast Avengers issue, an Incredible Hulk issue, and that sort of like locked me in as a super fan. And I just, even probably by middle school, I knew I wanted to draw, whether it was animation or comic books. And uh, when I got in high school, I found out about the Minneapolis College of Art and Design uh, by going to the Wizard World Chicago show in Rose, uh, Rosemont. And I came home with some information about it, and I told my parents I really wanted to go up to Minnesota and check out the school, and they drove me up here for a tour, and I instantly was like, oh, this is where I want to go. They have a comic book degree program. You get to live in a dorm room. It was just everything I kind of wanted, and I got a good education there, and I had Peter Gross, uh, who was working on Lucifer at the time for Vertigo. That was a big book. Yeah, and Barb Scholes, who was an inker uh, for a lot of books like Micronauts. Uh, They were my teachers and uh, really helped me out. And yeah, and so I graduated and I kind of put some time in. I do a lot of commercial work outside of comics, like storyboard work and stuff. But I was always hustling. I did a book called Horrorwood, which was a creator-owned book with a friend of mine I met in college. And then I did another creator-owned book called Astronaut Dad. And uh, I ended up starting getting some work at Boom when they had the Toy Story license and the Pixar books. And I got a couple of gigs through that. And there were a couple other kind of indie book projects. And then it really did. It took me like seven or eight years before I finally got a Marvel gig after, you know, working in the business. It took a long time and uh, got an opportunity. Uh, my friend Mitch Garrett's worked on The Punisher. And uh, and I that series was good, too. <laughs> and then I filled I, I kind of helped him out on a few issues. And then once you get in, you kind of kind of just got it. It's like the key is like it's hard to get in and it's hard to stay in but uh yeah batman 66 came about through jeff parker he just thought i'd be a good fit for it and yeah so that was one of my earlier books how did you know parker now he's a west coast guy he is a west coast guy he came up here for spring con or fall con um one year and i think we had become online friends through uh, like a like a forum board or something like that so i was aware of him but we weren't that was our first time ever hanging out and he needed a ride to the airport and uh, after the show, I think. And I was like, I'll take you. And he was like, all right, if you do this, I'll uh, I'll try to get you an issue of Batman 66. Six. Perfect. <laughs> and he was a man of his word because then he was like, what character would you like to do? And I was like, Egghead, because I was a big Vincent Price fan. <laughs> and uh, about uh, maybe a month later, uh, Jim Chadwick, who was the editor, reached out to me and said, um, 
Jeff Parker says he's got an egghead story for you for Batman 66. You got time to do it? And I was like, yeah. So, of course. Yeah. That's and awesome. It, yeah. And I can't remember if it was that or I did Adventures of Superman. I did a short little 10 page story for that. And I can't remember which one of those was first because it was, man, it was like right after my first kid was born and it was all a blur. All a blur. <laughs> all You're all too a blur. happy to think about the yeah. comics your kid's born. Yeah. I'm too busy wiping butt. So, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, you know, I just, uh, it was great though. I mean, I mean, that was so like to get Batman and Superman as your first two, you know, characters right off the bat, major, characters. major characters was yeah. super sweet. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And Batman 66 was such a blast and Parker's scripts were so fun. So it was a really great, you know, first big two comic project was, was awesome. And now you're in the industry and it is like the music industry. It seems like there's all, you're never, you're never safe. Yeah, no. You're, you're uh, always you're always you're always working your butt off to stay in the industry and, and be noticed. And we were kind of talking about this when we were signing with all the way the editors turn over and everything. You got to stay in front of them to make sure that you're known and they know who you are to remember true. to use you. Yeah, um, I think I was talking to someone earlier and I said uh, before COVID, I think I probably felt like I confidently knew uh, about eighty five percent of the editors at Marvel and DC. And since then to now. I probably know about 45% of them because there's just a turnover that happens and it's just part of the light, the, the game of comics. You, people get into it and I think they realize how hard it is and stuff and then they move on or they do something different and uh, you got to constantly kind of keep your work out there in front of them to, you know, uh, hopefully give you work. This may be a dumb question, but since you live in Minnesota and then all the big places are California, New York for networking purposes, do you just randomly send stuff in every now and say, hey, I'm Brent Schoonover, here's my work, if you need me, I'm here? Is that kind of how? Uh, yeah, that's absolutely what it is. Um, you know, uh, it's it's easier now than I think it's ever been. I feel bad for people, you know, back in the 80s and 90s and stuff where it's like you you could send stuff in, but you didn't really, you didn't even know where that packet was going to go. At least now we are lucky we can do emails directly. You may not look at them, but at least you know it it got there. got there and uh you know with social media and stuff it's great to like constantly put some work out there like i've been making a better effort of like you know video is king obviously we're on a youtube state channel right now of course but like i've been trying to do a better job of like when i get commissions or something like that to maybe do a time lapse video of them just to kind of have a video of it being created it's Smart nice to move. have that kind of stuff because it gets more interaction than just putting a picture of like here's here's Spider Man drawing I did and when, people like it and that's cool but they like to see that process of how it's made and stuff so that's kind of nice so trying to do more of that but um well we didn't film you making this but you did a kick ass <laughs> Lionel this is for me personally from uh, the Thundercats the you. Lionel uh, sketch so check that out you can see it right by I, Scoot over does awesome work so editors out there make sure you use them and whatever <laughs> get them a run and not just uh, variant covers, please, because we yeah. want to see them in a whole book. There we go. So make sure that uh, that you're using them for for a long series, please. So that's my pitch for you. There we go. So we have uh, we broke into the industry now, and then and you, you pick up some of the work. So tell us about uh, some of the more recent work now you've been doing. Yeah, um, Captain America: The Ghost Army came out a year ago. I was here for a signing for that, and uh, it's funny because for Scholastic, yeah, for Scholastic and Marvel, that was part of their deal. I think they it might have been the last book in their deal. I have no idea if they're continuing with more i hope they do i'd love to do a sequel to it but um it was great uh alan gratz who's the writer um he is that's his first graphic novel or comic book work but alan is he is basically the king of middle grade novels uh he just had a book that debuted at number one on the new york times bestseller list for that age wow. uh, demo and it's a book called heroes which is about the bombing at pearl harbor and uh he's a great history buff and in it's awesome. I got to know Alan and, and through making the book, and we went on a book tour uh, last February for it, and uh, it really was one of the coolest experiences I had because I, I love going to comic conventions. I love talking to people, um, but you don't always get a lot of kids, unfortunately, this day and age. Well, that's perfect and, for the seventh and eighth grade sweet spot. Too. Yeah, it, it is, was. My son is in eighth grade now. He loves that Captain America book that you wrote and, and autographed for him. And uh, but it's just a great story. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, uh, that's the sweet spot. If you can get a seventh and eighth grader to like it, hopefully yeah. they can continue into adulthood and keep us well, alive. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I kind of got out of that whole tour. We did about ten or twelve days on the road, and we did library chats and we did school visits, and it was just kind of infectious to see the excitement of kids 
uh, uh, on a superhero comic book. And I was like, man, you don't always get that when you go to a big convention or something like that, which, you know, I'm not putting down the, 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 the old guard comic fans because I think they're great too, but, uh, it is, there's something cool about seeing kids get excited about well, comics. There needs to be turnover. So the industry stays alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, need, we need young people to read comics. It shouldn't be just a 35 and older collector. hundred percent. You know, it has to, we have to get the kids involved. We're seeing a lot of that in recreational sports. We're seeing a lot of that. We need the young kids to be doing that again. Otherwise the sport are going to die the the comic book the physical aspect of the comic thing i mean yep it's just the trauma is great so i think that mm. that was good um the captain america series is great mm -hmm. you do any more for scholastic then? i you know I, I can't i put a pitch in for a writer a drawing and writing a book um and it's it's getting sent to scholastic and it's getting sent to other places too it i just sent it out so i'm kind of waiting to hear but uh fingers crossed fingers crossed so i'm 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 <laughs> i was just telling a friend of mine who came in today i can't decide if i'm super excited if it gets picked up or if it's not because then if i do get it picked up i'm like oh man i've never done this before but that's kind of the that's where the excitement comes and i've never written and drawn my own stuff for mo longer than maybe 10 or 12 pages so that's going to be a huge challenge for me but i'm kind of at this stage in my career where i'm kind of excited to t tackle something like that well, so i think you've earned it yeah i think so you've, and you've put in your your stripes yeah you know and, and i think if you've been around as a writer or i'm sorry an artist long enough i think you've got to you got to try seeing if you can do the whole thing you know uh, yourself and if you fail you fail no big deal you made a bad book not the end of the world but uh if you if you do it and you do it well uh, you get to do it again and uh, i think there's something kind of exciting about that and so that's currently where i'm at um, but i am still doing i just did a run to gargoyles co connecting covers which has been super fun that was a bucket list uh IP, I would say. And, you watched uh, that when you were a kid. I bet. Yeah, yeah, I loved that comic or that series. It kind of reminded me of Batman the animated series, the way it looked yep. and stuff. And so, um, yeah, and I've I've been doing some covers for Marvel, and yeah, besides developing that pitch, um, it's kind of in a weird down spot right now. But uh, you know, you you kind of never know when the when the next project's going to kick in. So, but uh, so you, know. you also did Back to the Future, which you could see right here. That's now right, Back to the Future first that, issue. That, that yeah. was. Uh, that was quite a few variants, and uh, you got. To, <laughs> I yeah. had, I think, I had three crates uh, dropped off one day that had like every variant cover of uh, that book. It was insane. It was like I don't know where I'm going to put all these. <laughs> so, a lot of comps. Yeah, a lot, lot of comps. comps. That's all right. Though. IDW is really good with those. So, so what, uh, what do you have coming out, coming up? Recent are coming out soon here that we should be aware of. Well, I've got a couple covers for Marvel. They do a thing called uh, with a company called VV, uh, which is digital collectibles. But then Marvel's cool, and I think they put those out uh, on, as variant covers too. So I just did a Craven the Hunter one, which was really fun to do. And I've got a I just did a, a Cable one with first appearance of Cable. And uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, uh, Baron Zemo. I've got one of those coming out, which is really fun. So I got to do classic Avengers for Baron Zemo covers, which is, I think it's fun because they always give me some of the older issues, which is kind of neat to go back and do a covers for those. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got, um, I've got, I, unfortunately, I can't say a lot about some of the other stuff I'm doing. No, I just wrapped okay. up. Uh, because I do stuff that's not comics specific, but I just did a Star Wars t-shirt design for a company called Roosevelt's. They do these really fun pop culture button-up t-shirts, and okay. I've done a lot of stuff with them. I've done It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia design. I've done Star Wars. I've done Spider-Man. I've done uh, Superman and versus Bizarro. Uh, they've got some great licenses on that stuff, and they know I'm a comic book guy, so they like to hire me for that kind of stuff. And I just did a... 25th anniversary phantom menace design for them that'll be coming out probably right around the summer or spring so, is there a website for that or uh roosevelt it's r-s-v-l-t-s roosevelt's.com and uh yeah there's uh, they don't exactly credit the artists on there but if anybody wants to know which shirts i've i've done i can yeah I can well, point them in and, that direction uh, you'd love to check out some of your commercial work on that oh yeah pretty cool I yeah mean, that sounds awesome because you you had you did your own t-shirt line back in the day too yeah and you had some of the funniest shirts you were your pre the print shirt <laughs> you had the green giant with with Paul Bunyan and, yeah and Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit just about that that bit the t-shirt bit well you know um, there's a when I first got started in in doing illustration work outside of after I graduated school um, there's a, a comic book artist in town named Peter Kraus who's great he worked on uh, the Shazam book in the early 90s. And uh, he does a ton of storyboard work in town. And I got talking to him about how does he balance doing comic books and 
uh, I guess, commercial art. And he, he, you know, he always gave me this great advice. And he was like, I'm not faithful to comics because comics are never faithful to me. And he's like, you kind of, yeah. And he's like, you kind of ride a wave sometimes. He's like, sometimes you get on a thing where comics is just in demand for you. They, they want you they, and stuff and it's great. And he's like, but then you get a little bit of a dry spell where maybe you're, you're not as much in demand. And so you kind of jump back into this world where you're doing Johnsonville brat storyboards or something like that. And, and uh, you know, you've, you've got to have a diverse skill set. And I, I always took that to heart because I thought that was a good idea. And so that's kind of what it is, is I, I was actually working on a project. I can't really go into details. I did, almost all of my 2023 was working on a project that unfortunately is um, for a legal snafu and delayed. And so I kind of had to jump and change my, my long-term plans a little bit. And so it's great to have this ability to kind of like check in with ad agencies and be like, Hey, do you have any projects available? And um, I, yeah, I've been able to do like count chocula and frankenberry uh cereal box design and um i've done these t-shirts locally like i've done a i've got a just boutique stores in town that carry some of my artwork and stuff like that and i've got a a prince t-shirt i've got a kirby puckett t-shirt uh, we've got this one that's paul bunyan and uh the, the jolly, jolly green, green giant thing. high-fiving each other and it just ideas that i i can crank out pretty quickly and then we can put it on a t-shirt and uh and they like carrying it. And it's kind of cool when you're walking around town and you see someone wearing one. Wearing and, uh, your shirt. Yeah. And my wife is a producer at photo shoots. And she told me the other day that she was at a photo shoot randomly and someone was wearing one of my shirts. And uh, they didn't even know who that that I was her, uh, her husband. So it was kind of funny. Even kind of funny. Lieutenant Governor was wearing yeah. your shirt. Yeah. And uh, Joe, Joe Maurer was uh, getting his, uh, I think it was his retirement. So she was rocking that. So that was kind of cool. There you go. See so if we get the big wigs. Like yeah he's rocking your stuff <laughs> that's cool man well I, yeah. I tell you what you know it, it's good to, especially in this market today and in, in the volatile world that we live in mm -hmm. i think it's great that you're so flexible because i think you've like you said to have residual income you've got to be flexible in this business yeah and um i love comics and i'd love to make them all the time every all all day long but uh sometimes i hate to say it like you can do a project for a, a, like an ad agency over a weekend that would pay you what a, you know, a 22 page comic book would pay, you know, right. you can, you got to kind of, and you're kind of crazy if you don't try to ed, keep your skills open for something like that, because that's you great know, advice. Yeah. It's, so it's great advice. Well, Brett, you know, I know, I know time is short and I know you have to get back to your family. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come to the store today, sign for people, and be here for us and do this interview with us. Yeah, happy so. to happy to be here. I love your guys' store. I love you know I, I, after seeing you guys grow and having the store now is awesome. Happy Thanks. happy one year anniversary. Here's to hopefully many 50 more. more. <laughs> and, and you're officially a most wanted maniac now oh, as part of the club. I'm, so I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have to get you back here when your next project comes out to sign. Uh, so, you know, you just let us know when we can announce it and we will, and uh, we'll carry it in the store. And uh, we're happy to have you come back. Well, thanks so much. We'll be doing it again soon. Appreciate it, Brett. Thank you. Yep. I tell you what, again, Brent's going over everybody that, uh, it was just an honor to have him here. And uh, I joked with him in the beginning saying it was an honor for him to be here, but it kind of went past. But anyway, it was an honor for us to have him here. And uh, we like to have He's welcome anytime he wants to come back. He always does great work. Um, speaking of that, too, we have hopefully we'll lock in Keith for March and then April 13th, the legendary animator uh, Tom Cook yep. will be here April 13th. Uh, so make sure you mark your calendars for that. Want to send a shout out to JD and Matt. Uh, Scott and the boys want to want to send out uh, Patricia and Sam and also the Seuss, Jimmy, the Seussers out there. want to say a big shout out to Jim. Uh, always being a big supporter of Most Wanted Comics. Thank you so much. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Atomic Tommy, uh, we got some things to talk about what's coming out. What's coming out this week? Yeah, so we like to keep our runtime low here. So in lieu of the multiple interviews, I think we will forego the reviews for this week, you know, I'm sorry for those who look forward to it. I'll catch you. I'll catch you guys next week. Uh, next week will be a big review. We'll talk about things from this week and last week. Uh, so we'll combine it uh, into next week. But uh, I will let you guys know what is coming out this week, the 21st. 
Uh, Predator, The Last Hunt, number one. Everybody likes Predator. Marvel has had a big focus on their sort of Fox characters and the Fox movie characters, Aliens, Planet of the Apes, you know, Predator, now that Disney acquired Fox. Uh, new Predator title, very cool. Also, and uh, probably the most exciting of all, Gods number five, the continuation of the universe-shattering story written by Jonathan Hickman, everyone's favorite writer right now. Hickman's a biggie. Hickman is a biggie. That one will be cool. And also, just to throw it out there, Edge of Spider-Verse number one. They do, one, they do one of these all the time, but a new number one starts for those who wants to jump on. So that comes out this week. All right. Well, let's uh, let's interview Keith here. Uh, I'm still pretty miffed about the Girl Scout cookie thing. I'm, yeah, uh, it really got to him. I'm not going to let that go right away because uh, I feel like I'm getting shorted. <laughs> <laughs> shorted. Not that I Stabbed don't in the back. need that, but it's like, come on, I bought five for thirty. I want my worth of girls. I mean, we can destroy a roll, you know, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, no problem. Oh yeah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. The Girl Scout cookies. What's the world coming to? I don't know. I mean, just the, hold- look, there. When Girl Scout cookies are affected, you know, there's a problem. Okay, <laughs> when Girl Scout cookies get affected, that's how you know things have gone too far. Okay. Let's call Brent back in here. See what we need to do. Oh, he already left. Sorry, we missed him. He's out the door. <laughs> He's out the door. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, up next, Keith, uh, the interview with Keith Champagne, everybody. All right, joining me for a digital on-the-phone interview, Keith Champagne. <laughs> we <laughs> got to get the claps for you once again. He's back to once again talk about New Pain Productions, some of the upcoming stuff they have going on currently. Uh, Keith, how are you? First of all, I just I got to get that that clapping sound effect just for my everyday life. So <laughs> oh, like yeah. every time I come in a room, I can press a button on my phone and get applause or something. It's really good for my self esteem. Thanks for that. Yeah, it, well, yeah. What you need really are those little tripwire sensors. So whenever you walk in a room, it just automatically plays. So I mean, that's every, a good idea. Every time you walk into the room, the claps play. You know that that's where it is. Do they have that on the dark web? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never looked, but, you know, I, who knows? They could. Come on. You've been on, on the dark web. Admit it. <laughs> well, uh, even if I was, um, tripwire sensors would probably be the coolest thing on there anyway. So, uh, anyway, how, uh, so rumor has it on Facebook and everything that Daybreak number four has launched its campaign and potentially funded. What are the uh, what are the words on that? Uh, the rumors, in this case, I don't like to listen to rumors, but in this case, the rumors are true. <laughs> that... Daybreak number, Daybreak number four, our double-sized giant finale, uh, is been on Kickstarter. We're about to hit our last week of the campaign. The last week kicks off on Tuesday. The campaign ends on the 27th of this month. Uh, we're fully funded. We've broken through a couple of stretch goals. So we've been able to add an eight-page backup story and a couple of like official Marvel handbook-style pages for two other characters in the book. And right now we're working to our $10,000 stretch goal, which is uh, a motion comic adaptation of Daybreak Number 1 from a studio called The Wilded Biscuit Productions. And they've been working on adapting the comic you know, with professional voice actors and like high grade production quality, like really cool graphic stuff they they brought to it. It's very very cool. People can go to the Kickstarter page, and it's a preview that they that they posted up there on the public motion comic. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. I think I saw that on YouTube, right? The trailer for that on YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's also on YouTube. Yeah, that I I can I'll have a link to that down in the description for those who want to check it out. Uh, but that's that's really cool. Motion comics are a huge thing. Uh, I know on YouTube, so that's that that's great. I I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I I don't know much about that side of the industry or the the YouTube stuff that they that these things are you know seem to be popular on. But uh, so this is kind of my first exposure to a motion comic, and I really think it's neat. Like it's just. It's a whole different experience of, of of reading the book. Yeah, that yeah. I mean, it's 
I know just from experience that motion comics can uh, allow you and any writer who's making them to, to really give a new, you know, maybe a, a spin or a side of the comic that you might not necessarily be able to get through reading. So motion comics are amazing. They're awesome. And I'm very happy that you're doing it with Daybreak. Um, tell me, you know, what kind of, let's go, I want to go into a little bit more detail about some of the uh, sort of backing bonuses and some of the stretch goals you have going for the campaign. So tell me, tell me a little bit more, I guess, about uh, what awesome things uh, backers can unlock. Well, I mean, I think through that, that like digital comics, we have an enhanced uh, PDF version of the book that comes with, you know, the, the script and some other, you know, different variant covers are included in that. Uh, some other back matter along with the 48 page uh, final issue. That, sometimes I wonder about running a campaign and just doing a digital campaign because it seems like half the backers just want the digital version anyway. Uh, but no, there's. Um, you can get the complete set. You know, we were also offering issues one through three along with this campaign for new backers that have missed out so far. Uh, there is a C B C C B G S. I think it is. It's not C G C. It's the other one. C B C S. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, graded copies of the first issue of Daybreak, like nine point eight, nine point six, graded copies. There's original art. Uh, there's a jigsaw puzzle. A, um, there's a mouse pad. Trying to come up with new things every campaign is tricky. So we've actually reached the part where we're making like merchandise, like jigsaw puzzles now. <laughs> there's a lot of cool. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can find on a page. And then people that like original art, we've got like a Doug Monkey, his variant cover art. Uh, Stefan Tasha's cover to Daybreak Number Four here is listed. He doesn't work on paper that often, so that's kind of cool. Usually he's a digital artist. It's something for everybody. We try to cover a lot of different price points that ranges from people from the, you know, people that don't have a lot of extra money to spend to the, to the rich mofos, the 1% that love our books. Yeah, and I, I that's some those are some great stretch goals, a lot of cool stuff being offered. Uh, I will have the link to the campaign down in the description for our viewers who maybe don't know about it and want to back it. Uh, but, Keith, man, that, that that's amazing. I mean, Daybreak... You know, four issues, uh, successful campaigns. Congratulations. I'm going to give you the claps one more time. Oh, more claps. More claps. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody Everybody loves to hear, I think, about New Pain and sort of the successes that you have and, and your company has, and that's amazing. So, once again, congratulations oh, from you. everybody here at Most Wanted Comics. Uh, I really appreciate that. You know, I've been doing comic books for a long time, longer than you've been alive, like almost double your lifespan. And uh, I think Daybreak is probably the project that I'm the most proud of. Whether, you know, whether people uh, like it or don't like it, and I've yet to have someone say they didn't like it. So I've I'm, I'm been lucky in that way, too. Um, but I don't think I've ever worked harder. Uh, put a comic book together and whether people like it or hate it, like it's exactly what I want it to be. Um, and I'm so happy to get the fourth issue out and I'm so proud of the work that we've done on this book. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And, uh, uh, once again, just absolutely incredible work coming out of new pain productions with daybreak number four link to that in the description for you all to check it out. Also, um, uh, Rumors also have it around here that you will be coming up here to Minnesota on March 16th. Can you confirm those rumors? I mean, I've heard that rumor myself. I think it, all the rumors are true today. I think I'll be out there for New Pain Day at Most Wanted Comics um, on the 16th. I'm just waiting for my, my itinerary to pop into my email, and then I'll know I'm good to go. But yep. I've talked to the rest of the New Pain crew, and we'll have some special guests there with us. And uh, we'll have a, a, a day of fun. Very cool. We're looking forward to it. Everybody's looking forward to it. We're going to have the whole or most of the new pain crew here with us on March 16th at Most Wanted Comics. Come out, say hi, join us. We'll be having a lot. We'll be having lots of fun. We might even have them on the podcast. Who knows? So come out, Ooh. say hi. Can we do a, can we do a live cast? We can think about it. <laughs> we, that would be a that'd be a heck of a first live cast for us. But 
we uh you know that that could certainly happen you know no promises but we'll, we can definitely think about that um if we do a live cast do i have to wear a shirt or can i be topless you know uh whatever whatever if youtube's okay with it we're okay with it you know what i mean so all right <laughs> you, there goes the shirt the shirt was going out the window <laughs> going out the window um but so yeah come out say hi march 16th and uh yeah keith uh, is there anything what what else what can we look forward to in the future of new pain what 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 do we got coming up next that you can talk about so our next campaign will launch in april and that's going to be our first sketchbook edition uh we're going to do a sketchbook edition for uh, an artist named keith williams who is you know worked with marvel mostly with marvel uh through the 80s and 90s uh on tons of great pencilers of Inker. He also does a ton of uh, sketches and commissions and things. We're collecting his work into a 48-page sketchbook. It's our first time trying this one out. And then I think in uh, in July, we're slated to have another two-in-one campaign with a new switchbook, and then also uh, the second issue of Jump, which will be out uh, if we finish by then. And then uh, I forget what October is. I think... July, no, September, I believe, is a book called Punch, uh, the first issue of a book called Punch, which stands for Pubescent Undercover Neurodiverse Cryptid Hunters. It's, uh, no one does these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books anymore, these, like, knockoff books with, the, with that same sort of charm. So New Pain is bringing it back. Very cool. And then... And then our final campaign, I believe, will be a trade paperback this year for Daybreak. But that's still not set in stone. That might be next year. Wow. Well, we got a, we, a stacked list. A stacked 2024 for New Pain. This is it's going to be a hell of a year. And July, I mean, wow, new Switchbook just in time for my birthday. I mean, it was it was made for me. Happy birthday to me, that's, new Switch. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Y'all, that's the greatest birthday gift I could have a new Switchbook. Um, it was supposed to be for your 12th birthday, but Tom's taking so long to draw it. <laughs> you know, that's, yep, that's a good one. Well, you know, better late than never, I guess. Perfect in time for my 19th. Um, at the, yeah, a, a great year. Um, we'll be keeping you guys updated with all of his, all of New Pain's uh, Kickstarters going on as they drop. We'll all be backing it here. You should back it too, everybody watching. Everybody go back. Follow New Pain Productions. Make sure you keep up with what they're doing because they put out some amazing work. Uh, Keith, is there anything else you'd like to add? I mean, I don't know how to top that, so I think I'll just shut up now. <laughs> but I appreciate you having me on the on the on the cast again, uh, Tommy. It's really good talking to you again. Oh yeah, awesome talking to you. You know, we we always love to have you on. I always love to talk to you. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming on, and uh, we'll see you on March sixteenth. All right, buddy. I'll see you soon. All right. See you. Well, good job taking the reins on that interview, Tommy. You did good. Thank you. I should say you did well for the English teachers out there. I did pass English. Uh, Anyway, uh, great job on the interview. Uh, We're looking forward to uh, Keith coming out here to Minnesota, and uh, we'll tear it up on that weekend, have fun, and have a good time, and maybe rock out some sketches and uh, have him sign some autographs. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a big party here at Most Wanted Comics. Uh, With that, everybody, we're going to recover from the uh, devastation of finding out that shrinkflation happened on the Girl Scout cookies. And uh, we're going to recover from that. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.